In today's video, we're going to meet some of the ocean's giants. From the biggest squids to the oldest sharks. First though, let's talk about the jumbo-sized pill bugs that can kill sharks with Giant Isopod. Giant isopods are the jumbo-sized cousins of the armored crustacean people often find milling under fallen logs. Those isopod species usually measure less than half a centimeter. Giant isopods, though, can grow up to 80 times longer. So, what's up with that? How's that possible? Well, according to researchers, they likely adapted and evolved due to their surroundings. These isopods are afflicted with deep-sea gigantism, as are all the animals on this list, as you'll soon discover. And because of that, scientists noticed that the giant isopods' genomes are incredibly large. They found that this species has a high number of jumping genes, which are linked to high mutation rates, something the experts believe is what makes the isopod better equipped to deal with environmental stress. Aside from that, scientists also say that the giant isopod's size can be attributed to its stomach, as it can expand and take up two-thirds of its body. This means they can gobble much of it as possible for as long as they can find food. That and its genes boost its ability to grow and absorb nutrients as well. Supergiant Amphipods Scientists on an expedition to sample a deep-sea trench had gotten a major surprise when their traps brought back seven giant crustaceans. They had only been seen a handful of times in human history. These supergiant amphipods are more than 20 times larger than their typical crustacean relatives, which often only reach lengths of half an inch and usually thrive in lakes and oceans worldwide. According to Elaine Jameson, a lecturer at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland, the creatures didn't feel real. In fact, the 11-inch long specimens felt like plastic toys due to how waxy they were. Pale animals were found four miles down the Kermadec Trench, one of the deepest trenches on Earth, which is off the northeast coast of New Zealand. Aside from the animals captured into the trap, a camera they had set up spied at least nine more supergiant amphipods underwater. It's unclear why there were so many elusive creatures in the area, but a week later, when Jameson returned, they were all gone. Supergiant amphipods were first discovered in 1899 when a trawler caught two specimens from the Atlantic Ocean. King of Herrings or Fish For decades, stories and legends of sea monsters have surfaced, spawning beliefs that demonic creatures are stealing crew members and sinking their ships. Honestly, it's all probably a misunderstanding, and the beast in question is most likely a king of herrings or fish. Though mainly restricted to the oceanic depths, sometimes an oarfish can be found floating on the surface or washed ashore in temperate seas worldwide. Since first described by Peter Ascanius in 1772, the giant oarfish has become famous in the marine biological world. Luckily, in recent decades, several videos of live oarfish have surfaced, one of which comes from deep in the Gulf of Mexico, however. The specimen was reported to have a maximum length of 36 feet and a maximum weight of 600 pounds, making it the world's longest bony fish. So how do deep-sea giants like these find their way to our shores then? Easy. They're notoriously bad swimmers. Though they can move in serpentine-like fashion, it usually hangs vertically in an ocean water column and drifts along with the currents. It filters water as it goes. No wonder they get beached a lot. Giant and Colossal Squids Growing longer than a bus, the giant and colossal squid tip scales weighing hundreds of kilos. Surprisingly, despite being massive cephalopod species, little is known about them to this day. It was only in 2004 that a photo of a live giant squid in its natural habitat was captured. As for the colossal squid, none yet. Lack of observations extreme. John Ablett, the senior curator of the Natural History Museum in the UK, says that these creatures have been part of folklore for thousands of years. Heck, he even had the likes of Aristotle writing about them. According to him, people have been interested in these cephalopods because of their mystique and mythology. Though they might have deep-sea gigantism, they do make great stories. In fact, it goes so far as to say these creatures are responsible for our legends about sea monsters. So, exactly how big are they? Well, historical reports say the colossal squid can reach 30 meters long, though the only specimen experts have gotten their hands on was about 9 meters long. Granted, it wasn't fully mature. As with the giant squid, about 13 meters at most. Seven-Arm Octopus Based on scientific records, the seven-arm octopus is one of the two largest known species of octopus. They have a maximum estimated total length of 13 feet and a weight of 150 pounds. That isn't the only thing that makes this octopus stand out from the other 300 species, though. They have one less arm than they do. Sort of. Anyway. It actually does have eight arms, but one is simply too difficult to notice. While they appear different from the rest with their lesser arms and bigger body, they follow suit with other species. It's highly intelligent with the ability to adapt to the environment. They also hide in cracks and crevices well due to their flexibility, 
and they're also able to change colors to blend into their environment by controlling their pigments. This species likes sinking its teeth into fish, mollusks, and crustaceans for food. They also tend to be opportunistic feeders instead of being picky like other octopi are. Their beaks are so strong that they can almost always break into the shell of whatever food they catch. Because of that, their beak is also effective at immobilizing prey. Deepwater Stingray Though it's called the Deepwater Stingray, this species can hunt prey both on the sea floor and above it in open water. This is why crustaceans, cephalopods, and bony fishes have nowhere to hide so long as one of these stingrays is within their vicinity. You know how hard that is? Significantly hard, because this species comes from several different locations scattered around the world. Specifically, you can find them widely in the Indo-Pacific. The best place to spot them, though, appears to be in tropical Australian waters. These 4.3 foot to 6.6 .6 foot creatures with flabby bodies also have a long, flexible snout that's well suited for digging through sediment. And much like other stingrays, they have venomous stingers. Still, that doesn't mean that they're safe from predation. The more area they cover, the more enemies they encounter, too. One popular predator is the kite fin shark. Scientists have recorded that one specimen had been severely gouged by one. That and the fact that they aren't prolific and make it sound like they're endangered species. But thankfully, according to the IUCN, these creatures were assessed to be of least concern. Greenland Shark Of all the shark species, the Greenland shark is the most peculiar. It can be found in the icy depths of the Arctic waters. More specifically, around 2,000 meters underwater, which is somewhere in the ocean's midnight zone. Because of that, the Greenland Sharks experience deep-sea gigantism, too, which is just a tendency of deep-sea creatures to be larger than their shallow-water counterparts. The Greenland Shark can grow to be 6 meters long and weigh about 2,000 pounds, making them one of the largest shark species in the world. Despite their size, however, they don't attack humans. That or those instances go about unrecorded. Because of where they live, they're primarily scavengers, unlike their close relative, the Pacific Sleeper Sharks, which are known to eat colossal squids. Unlike other sharks, the Greenland shark is a living fossil, with some individuals being speculated to be 400 years old or even older. They found this out by radiocarbon dating the innermost layers of their eye lens, as this lens adds layers as the shark grows older. The two biggest Greenland sharks are about 335 to 392 years old. Now it's time for the day's best pick. This animal looks like it came right out of a sci-fi film, but I assure you it exists, and it's all natural. Japanese spider crabs. At first glance, you may think these creatures are ancient monsters. However, in the marine community, they're known to be gentle giants, despite looking like armored spiders. Like the other animals on this list, this crab lives on the ocean floor between 160 to 2,000 feet in depth, usually in holes and pits. Living at such depths caused them to grow out to the monstrous size that most of them display, and it also gave them the thorny protective exoskeleton with 10 giant legs. Because of that, they have few natural predators. They eat just about anything. Scientists uncovered that they diet on dead and decaying animals and plant matter on the seabed. Not surprising given how few survive in those depths. Still, if an unlucky live fish were to swim within range, they wouldn't hesitate to eat that too. Currently, they've yet to be evaluated by the IUCN, but overfishing and the destruction of their natural habitat are becoming problems. It's said that the species is decreasing, so people are trying their utmost to conserve and protect the Japanese spider crab. Giant tube worm. Somehow, the world's heaviest worms thrive in an extreme environment. And by that, I mean in the deep sea. Towering colonies of giant tube worms grow where hot, mineral-laden water flows out of the deep sea floor. Surprisingly, unlike other animals, these guys don't eat. Instead, they survive solely on sulfur, which the bacteria in their guts transform into energy for them. As harsh as their surroundings are, these worms are surrounded by a community of other animals, which ultimately may not be a good thing because while they're huge and heavy, their size doesn't necessarily protect them. Their gills, which resemble foot-long feathers, are vulnerable. Sure, the worms can retract these at any time, but they can still be taken by surprise. When volcanic activity changes in the seafloor, the hot water sometimes stops flowing. When that happens, the entire colony may die. But not all hope is lost. When a new hotspot is detected, their larvae quickly colonize the area. Researchers are currently stumped on how these larvae find the vents, but they're starting to form some theories after multiple research expeditions on the seafloor. Big Red Jellyfish while surveying the gumdrop seamount off the central California coast in 1998, Mbari staff noticed an unusual and huge jellyfish swimming about. The creature was about a full meter across, and unlike most jellies, this one didn't dwell near the ocean's surface. The opposite was true, it lived in the deep water. 
and I mean real deep, 2,000 to 7,000 feet underwater, actually. Signed has also been another observation. These jellies didn't have tentacles. Instead, they had a cluster of finger-like oral arms that dangled beneath its colossal bell. Researchers soon understood that it was a new species that had actually eluded scientists years earlier. Video observation captured by Mbari's robotic submersibles helped researcher George Matsumoto and his colleagues in California and Japan form formal descriptions of the unusual jelly. In the end, they named it Tiburonia aranrojo, after the ROV Tiburon, which was instrumental in documenting this species. Scientists have since spotted this creature across the Pacific Ocean. Though it eluded them before, the rediscovery of it solidified one thought in their minds. There's gotta be more giants out there waiting to be found. See you all next time!